Well, good morning or good afternoon, and welcome to our webinar today, Temporary Kitchens 101. Everything you wanted to know about Temporary Kitchens, but we're afraid to ask. Hopefully, uh, you're not afraid to ask, and we welcome any questions. We have a, a lot of information to share with you today, so we will jump in. First of all, my name is Ralph Goldbeck. I am one of the partners of Kitchens to Go and Carlin Manufacturing. I've uh, been in the food service sector now for about 26 plus years. Uh, my partner in crime today, Carrie Franz, is not able to join us, unfortunately, so I'll be uh, sharing this information with you by myself uh, today, but uh, hopefully Carrie can join us sometime in the future. First of all, a little bit about Kitchens to Go. Kitchens to Go is the leader in mobile and modular food service solutions for the uh, food service marketplace. We've been around since 1999 providing temporary food service solutions. Our Sister partner, Carlin Manufacturing, is our manufacturing partner that builds all of the units that we use. And uh, one of our newest products, the Bolt-On Kitchen Concept, is a new uh, product we've offered to the marketplace. It is an award winner of the 2012 NRA Kitchen Innovation Award and uh, a program that we'll cover a little bit more in the presentation. Our agenda today, well, first of all, we'll talk about what is a temporary kitchen, some of the options for temporary food service, uh, the key parts of planning and approvals, really the facts of a temporary kitchen program, the benefits of using temporary or interim kitchen solutions, and then we'll actually take a look at a few temporary kitchen solutions in action and then follow up with your questions and hopefully some answers. So what is a temporary kitchen? Well, it's a mobile or modular culinary uh, complex that is put in place to replace or supplement your existing facilities during a time of closure. That closure could be uh, renovation, remodel, or uh, some type of disaster recovery situation. These solutions are entirely scalable, meaning that they can start off small with one unit or be expanded to uh, multiple units to meet your volume and demand. There's a number of different types of solutions available. We offer mobile, modular, and containerized temporary kitchen facilities. The mobile units are typically uh, more of a short-term solution. They are either trailers or step vans, uh, very mobile, and are, are good for a one to six month need. They're ideal for a quick response if you've got a special event or if you are closed unexpectedly due to some type of disaster, maybe a fire in your facility. We can roll a mobile unit out in as little as 24 hours notice. If you have a longer term need, such as a plan renovation, we would suggest looking at a modular solution. The modulars are prefabricated structures that are designed and used for more of a long term application anywhere from six months on. A lot of our programs go from six months to 14 months on average. They're designed to allow for increased capacity and volume production, and uh, it can even be used for disaster recovery for future needs. In addition to the mobile and modular solutions, we also have some containerized units that are actually built in an 8x40 shipping container. These are very mobile, can be shipped out uh, within 24 hours, and are ideal for a quick response. The program I talked about earlier, the bolt-on, is actually just what it sounds like. It is a bolt-on modular solution. Units are 12 foot by 56 foot long, and are prefabricated, can be shipped out to the site, actually bolted on to an existing dining facility, such as a large uh, special events center or maybe uh, some auxiliary space that you may have at your site that you want to use for dining, you can actually bolt the kitchen onto your open dining space. So a lot of options that you can see for temporary food service programs. In addition to the food service production areas, we also can provide cold and dry storage, uh, tray line assembly units for some healthcare food service full dishwash capabilities with flight washers on down to small rack conveyor washers. Dining facilities, if you don't have an open space, there are modular and stress membrane structures that we can provide that will provide dining space. In addition to food service and dining, uh, support facilities such as toilets and locker rooms, even office space for your staff, trash rooms, recycling, and in some cases, emergency power generation is also available. 
So what are the facts to plan and prepare for a temporary kitchen facility? Well, the, the key to the process is really planning. We like to say that you can't start planning early enough. Some of the larger programs we've been involved with have actually started uh, the planning process two years in advance of a large scale renovation. So plan as early as possible. Now, the timeline for the whole process is uh, very similar to building a building or building a new kitchen. You have the program and design phase, which takes anywhere from one to four weeks. The code approval process is very similar to getting a building approved. Uh, we'll cover that in a little more detail, but that takes two to four weeks. Production of the units, uh, whether it's minor or major, can take up to four weeks, uh, even, even longer in some cases if we have to build new modules. Delivery and installation of the complex will take anywhere from one to five weeks, and then the testing and training portion of the program where we actually send teams out to meet firsthand with your staff and your maintenance folks will take two to five days. So the total timeline for an interim kitchen program can be anywhere from five to 18 weeks. Or in cases of disaster, as I shared earlier, we have some units in inventory that can be packaged up and shipped out on a moment's notice. So um, just uh, give us a ring if you have an immediate need and we'd be happy to respond. The code approval process is uh, another key to getting uh, the units in place. As I shared, it's very similar to what you would experience with building a fixed kitchen. You need to go through your local environmental health department, and uh, in addition, state, county, and city building departments uh, need to review the plans. We can provide uh, complete engineered drawing packages that you can share with your engineers or architects to to go through the plan review process, and we have uh, staff available to help answer some of those questions. Uh, it's, it's very similar to what you would experience with a fixed built complex, that it just happens a little quicker. The next part of the facts uh, review deals with the investment of a program, and this is a question that we get quite often, just how much does it cost for a temporary kitchen facility? We work on a lease basis to where we have a monthly lease amount that uh, we charge for the essentially the rental of the units. And then in addition to that, we have one-time charges. Uh, for a cook unit, for instance, uh, the price ranges anywhere from 6,500 to 13,000 per month for the production unit. And as you can see from the slide, the prep and tray lines uh, range from 5,500 to 9,500. Dishwash units based upon the type of equipment, whether it's a rack conveyor or a flight, can range from 95 to 13,000 per month. Additional walk-in cooler space uh, and storage spaces are available. And then if uh, you're in need of some dining space, typically the dining space runs about $50 to $75 per person per month for the large dining area that we can attach to the production space. So uh, by taking a look at the modules needed, we can uh, generate a rough budget for you to help with your planning process. In addition to the monthly lease amount, we also have one-time charges which are the cost to ship the units to your location, to put them in place, connect them together, make them operational. And then at the end of the program, we'll come back out and essentially reverse that process. The units are uh, taken apart and packed up and then returned to our uh, local depot. So uh, fairly simple process, and, and we can give you uh, budget figures on what your one-time charges uh, might be to help with your planning program. Question we have all the time is, should I lease or should I purchase? Well, it's a great question. Um, like any lease program, you have to weigh that uh, option for the investment. When you run the numbers, if you're going to need a unit for in excess of 18 months, it might be more cost effective for you to actually purchase the facility. But then you have to figure out, uh, what do I want to do with it after the need, after the temporary need? Is it a type of facility that I can leave on my campus or my hospital? a site, uh, do I have a need for the facility after 18 months or longer, or is it just more convenient to have us come out and pick up the unit and, and have it uh, go away? So it's all part of the planning process and, and something that you need to consider up front to start of the program. Another key item uh, deals with utilities. It takes a, a pretty good uh, amount of utility power, uh, water, gas to drive these units. Uh, the units are available in both natural gas and propane. In some cases, if, for instance, if you're a hospital and you're near an oxygen farm, we have all electric options available. 
But the utility demands are very similar to what you currently are seeing with your existing kitchen. And so your utility costs will run close to what you're currently experiencing. Uh, we have factored in a number of energy efficient uh, design features on our units, uh, energy efficient lighting, a uh, high level of insulation. We're looking at some daylighting options. We're even experiencing some uh, requests for solar power. So as some of the new energy efficient uh, design options uh, are available to us, we will integrate those into our solutions. Equipment. Uh, any production kitchen is going to need a, a full bank of equipment. The equipment on board is commercial grade equipment, of course, all NSF and UL approved. The production kitchens have tempered makeup air and exhaust systems with complete fire suppression systems. In some cases, if you have existing equipment that you would like to utilize in one of the temporary kitchens, we can sure pick that up and clean it up and move it into the temporary complex. Or if you know what type of equipment you plan to purchase for your new facility, that equipment can be purchased uh, early and provided to us, we can move it into the temporary facility and uh, use it during the interim complex uh, lifespan. And then after the program is done, we'll come in and pick it up and move it into your new facility. So uh, you can share some cost savings there and, and make the program overall more affordable. So what are your options when you have to consider a temporary kitchen? Well, the alternatives to using a temporary kitchen are really three alternatives. First of all, probably the most common is phase construction. Uh, the construction period can take up to two to three times longer when you phase it. Uh, the plan is to go in and shut down maybe a third of the kitchen and do the renovation and then uh, move over to another part of the kitchen and, and you end up with uh, what we call construction fatigue. You have visqueen curtains, you've got dust and noise, You've got your GC on site for up to two to three times longer, uh, creating additional cost. So that is one of the options, but it's not a very pleasant option. And, and we've uh, heard a lot of feedback from our clientele that it's just not a palatable option. Another option is to outsource to outside food service or outside catering. Now that is extremely costly, anywhere from 20 to 30 percent more than in-house production. Uh, there's a concern about the overall level of food quality and consistency. If you have to transport food a long distance, uh, the food quality is always in question. Even food safety, which has become uh, more of a concern nowadays with uh, the safety concerns that we have out there as far as uh, potential terrorism or contamination. And it, it also creates uh, some issues with your staff which may affect morale. So outside catering is a costly option. The third option is just a complete kitchen shutdown. And in some cases, that's not really an option. Um, you may have a, a clientele, sort of a captive audience with a group of employees that you have to keep employed, or you have patients or prisoners in a correctional facility that you have to feed. So a complete kitchen shutdown may not be an option. So these are the three options to an interim facility that you can consider. But for a number of reasons, we think that the benefits of a temporary kitchen uh, greatly outweigh the three options we just discussed. When you use a temporary kitchen, you will see reduced cost for downtime as compared to uh, phase construction. It will reduce the overall length of the program and take some of that construction fatigue out of the equation. It allows you to maintain the quality control and consistency of the food service program that you are used to running. Your clients or your customers remain engaged and don't have to deal with the uh, noise and dust of renovation or expansion. You can keep your staff employed, which of course uh, helps morale and uh, keeps the continuity of your operation in place. So uh, sometimes a complete shutdown is not an option, so a temporary kitchen may be your best solution. As I mentioned, when is a temporary kitchen uh, my only option? Well, primarily when you, you can't shut down the main facility, you've got to stay in operation. Also, if you have a correctional facility or maybe on a airport uh, facility or a high-tech campus, you have to deal with security issues. So you've got a perimeter to protect. Uh, you don't have the opportunity to bring in outside food service. So uh, all those things considered, uh, there are a number of reasons why a temporary kitchen 
may be your best option. So let's take a little time and look at some temporary kitchen projects in action. Our first program to review today is a project that we did up at uh, Merritt College up in Northern California. And this is an interesting program. It's sort of a smaller uh, solution uh, made up of one mobile unit, which is a 10 foot by 36 foot long mobile kitchen trailer. And this image shows the kitchen trailer uh, with one walk-in cooler box. And this was put in place for about six months for the students on this uh, college campus to walk up and access the the trailer itself and then after the six month period it was moved over and connected to a two unit modular dining facility and was in place for another 12 months while they transferred food service operations from an existing facility uh, into the temporary interim program and then after the 12 month uh, period uh, food service was then moved back into their new kitchen facility on site so as you can see a lot of flexibility with a mobile unit uh, can be moved around on campus and uh, used in a standalone basis or connected to a modular dining space. Next program is actually a bolt-on solution that uh, we discussed earlier. This is a project up at Phillips Academy back in the Northeast. And in this case, they took an existing outdoor hockey rink and enclosed the facility to create a nice uh, open air dining space. We provided four modular kitchen units and four walk-in coolers, two production units and two prep units. We lifted them in place with a crane over a uh, foundation system and actually bolted them onto the hockey rink uh, next door. This program, as you can see in the floor plan, consisted of the two production units and the two prep units. Uh, it was in place for about six months, and the client came to us and with the decision to transition this facility into a permanent uh, special events center after the renovation of the historic dining facility. So we ended up going in and picking up two of the four modules, and then the production unit and one prep unit are still essentially bolted on to the hockey rink and are in place as a permanent facility. And that's a, a good example of how the modular units are designed and built as permanent structures even though they're only used for an interim period. So in this case it went from an interim solution to a permanent addition to the campus at Phillips Academy. The third program we'll take a look at today is a healthcare program for Banner Thunderbird down in Glendale, Arizona. This is an eight unit complex consisting of full production, uh, on-site the wash facilities with a flight the washer, cart wash, uh, dry storage, cold storage, and even a staff toilet and locker facility. This unit was lined up on an existing helipad at the hospital that was used for this complex, connected to shore utilities or site utilities, and was in place for about 18 months while they finished up the new kitchen facility for the hospital towers that were in production. As you can see from this shot of the production area, Large, high-volume uh, production was taking place, kettles, a uh, nice lineup with uh, a prep area. In this case, you can see on the image on the left, we actually provided smooth surface FRP wall covering, which you could use as like a giant whiteboard. So you can see over this prep station, they've got uh, today's menu scratched on the wall there and, and uh, giving direction to the uh, food service team. The image on the right shows the flight machine and a... Uh, power wash uh, three comp sink. Uh, this facility handled all of the food service production and cleaning for the hospital for a total period of 18 months. A layout of the uh, diagram of the unit, uh, food was uh, brought in from the uh, new loading dock that was constructed and uh, processed through the interim kitchen complex. It was then put onto a series of uh, hot and refrigerated carts and then transported into the dining space in the hospital. They had a tray line that was brought in that was actually a new tray line for the hospital that was picked up and relocated into the new facility at the end of the interim period. So a great example of how a, a temporary complex met the entire food service needs of the hospital along with utilizing some of the new equipment that would be used in the new kitchen facility for the hospital itself. So in summary, 
Uh, temporary kitchens are, we believe, a really an ideal and cost-effective uh, solution for a number of food service challenges, whether you're going to experience a renovation or a remodel, uh, new construction, if you're going to expand your existing facility and don't want to go through the uh, interruption of having construction fatigue and uh, noise and dust, uh, it's a great example of how you can take your, your production essentially outside of your existing footprint and uh, be able to meet your production needs. If you have a need to increase your capacity or storage, uh, we can provide bolt-on solution for that. And then if you are uh, either preparing for or responding to a disaster, a number of uh, the regions, of course, in our country have to deal with hurricanes and tornadoes. Uh, we have units available to roll uh, within 24 hours notice to help to get you back into operations. So again, temporary kitchen facilities are a great alternative to the three items we discussed, the phase construction, outside food service, or a complete uh, kitchen shutdown. I wanted to share a picture of one of our happy customers, uh, Guy Fietti, who uh, was not afraid to ask what a temporary kitchen was. He uh, used one of our units to help uh, shoot his TV show up in Santa Rosa, and that was a great experience and provided a lot of feedback on what he uh, liked and didn't like about our program. And so we've taken his comments and integrated them into some new solutions. So with that, I'd be happy to entertain some questions. Uh, the first question that's come up today Will the slides be available for uh, use after this webinar? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Uh, we are actually recording this webinar today, and it will be posted on our Kitchens to Go website. You can see our website address there at the, uh, at the center of the slides, so please just feel free to log on to our website. We'll have the slides and the recording available within 24 hours for your use. If you would like to uh, get more information, just feel free to call us or email Kerry at Kerry at uh, k-t-g.com, and we will be happy to email you the slides, or if needed, be happy to even uh, send a team out to brief your team on uh, temporary kitchen solutions and help start that planning process. Another question is, can I use some of my own equipment? Uh, the answer to that is yes, as we shared earlier. Uh, you can take some of the existing equipment out of your kitchen and put it into the temporary uh, kitchen facility, or if you plan to, uh, to buy some of your new equipment uh, ahead of schedule, we can utilize that to help offset some of the costs. Another question is, are these units winterized? Uh, great question. I know uh, parts of the Midwest and East Coast, of course, have just survived a very severe winter. And uh, one of our offices is back in Naperville, which uh, has been dealing with those conditions all year long. So we're very sensitive to the need to be able to operate uh, through the middle of a severe winter. The units are fully insulated, uh, heated and cooled. All the plumbing systems are protected. On the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, we also deal with a lot of folks down in the southeast. We are sensitive to the need for uh, refrigerated makeup air systems, even in high humidity areas. We understand that kitchens generate a great deal of humidity, and so our temporary kitchen units are uh, designed on the same type of uh, uh, design constraints as you would experience with a permanent facility. Another question is, can you provide supplements to existing utilities? Um, we have uh, provided propane tanks uh, to go along with our units. Uh, when we go out to evaluate an interim facility location, we're really looking at a couple of key factors. First of all, the flow. We want to make sure that uh, your food product can come in and be received and produced and then transferred into your dining space. But the other key consideration deals with existing utilities. Uh, in some cases, it can be more expensive to extend utilities out to an open space than it, it would cost for the entire temporary complex itself. So. We are very sensitive to that, and we try to suggest location for the temporary kitchen that is close to your existing utilities on your site. So we look at the electrical load, which can be transferred and, and extended out, uh, water, uh, sewer, and uh, even gas. So that's why we look at some propane options. If uh, your fire department will allow you to have a large propane tank, we can provide either natural gas or propane solutions. And if we have a propane solution, we can then uh, set up a temporary tank and uh, provide the gas that you need. 
Okay, it looks like we have a couple more questions coming in. We were in need of units for emergency use. Where would they ship from? And do you have shipping sites in different areas of the country? How long does shipping usually take? We have depots in five different locations throughout the U.S. so that we can get to a location probably within, I would say, no greater than 24 to maybe 48 hours. Uh, the units themselves uh, are a mixture of wheeled and modular units, and so we can provide a response to your need. And uh, just a matter of, of finding out what your volume is and then checking our depots to see what is in stock and how quickly it can hit the highway. So one thing we do offer that uh, may be of interest is we have a disaster response program that we would suggest that uh, you take advantage of. And what that is is this is this be a pre-registration where we uh, set up a dialogue and find out what your needs may be. And so we do some pre-planning, some pre-disaster planning, and so we can already set up a relationship and uh, know what your needs are and have units earmarked so that if uh, you have a tornado or a hurricane come through your part of the country, we already have the paperwork in place so that we can respond quickly and help uh, keep your food service program in operation. So as you can see, there's a number of options. Uh, it's very flexible. Uh, all of our uh, solutions are somewhat custom designed for your needs, but using standard components so we don't have to go back and reinvent the wheel and, and start from ground zero. So uh, we would welcome the opportunity to share more information with you. Again, uh, if you have questions, uh, please just email carrie at k-t-g.com or visit our website. Uh, in, in addition to that, we have another webinar coming up on uh, April the 2nd. Although this is April the 3rd, it's actually April the 2nd. That will be at 11 a.m. Pacific, and it will focus on uh, temporary food service solutions for healthcare. So please make a note of that on your calendar, and we'd be happy to have you join us uh, for that webinar. Oh, one more question just popped in. How long can we expect to make a kitchen operational after it arrives on site? That really depends upon the scale of the program. Uh, smaller complexes like the Merritt College campus can be operational within a few days. Uh, larger complexes like Banner take up to uh, three to four weeks to put in place. It's just a matter of the uh, level of utilities that have to be extended. But, uh, it's just uh, a case of, of getting your folks trained and getting in operation. So I would say uh, anywhere from one to four weeks, uh, you'll be in operation based upon the size of the facility. Now the question is, do you have a list of typical cook line units available and cost? We do. We have a number of units actually listed on our website, so I would uh, welcome uh, you to go to our website and take a look at uh, some of our standard unit designs. Uh, we have different size units, and the units have a built-in hood. We normally work in hood modules of 11 feet, so we have 11, 22, and 33-foot hoods, and we can go in and build your cook line under that hood based upon your requirements. So the hood is in place, but the cook lines are built out per your requirements. Now the question is, what about grease traps? Uh, great question. Uh, in some cases, we try to utilize the existing grease trap if possible. If the existing grease trap is too far away, we can provide temporary grease traps that can fit under the temporary kitchen. And uh, we'll come in and hook those up with the plumbing manifold system and then have your folks connect your utilities to the grease trap so that you're in uh, conformance with your local code. Uh, we will provide some uh, plumbing load information so that your local engineers can help size the grease trap based upon your local requirements. Okay, I've got another question here. How far east um, do you go? Well, we go all the way to the northeast. Uh, we cover the complete uh, U.S. We have temporary kitchen facilities uh, that we put in place up in Canada, down in Mexico. I'm actually uh, traveling down to South America next month to look at a couple of opportunities there. So we cover the entire United States. Uh, we, we also access uh, Alaska and Hawaii. And so we have means to transport units via barge or, or ship as needed. On the Carlin side, Carlin has product in 24 different countries around the world, so we, we are familiar with different types of electrical systems and different climate conditions, so uh, no problem with us covering the complete uh, U.S. market. So um, just give us a call, and we'd be happy to uh, pop on site and take a look at what your needs are.
Next question is, can a disaster plan be prepared for a company and what would the planning cost? We have uh, three different levels of our disaster response plan program. The first level is just to get you registered and uh, so we have your contact information uh, in hand and, and we share our leasing documents up front so your team, your legal team can review those if they have any questions before a disaster. The second level is to actually go through a registration process to where we identify your needs and go through the design of what your requirements would be so we have that already pre-planned. And then the third level is, is a uh, retainer type uh, relationship to where for a monthly retainer we can actually earmark equipment and have it available so you have essentially first access to our fleet. And if you have a critical application, I would suggest that uh, we discuss having that type of relationship just to make sure that you have essentially kitchen insurance in your hip pocket so that you're ready in times of disaster. So please feel free to reach out to us. We will send you some documentation on those three levels of disaster preparedness. And again, the, the key to uh, that is just planning. As I mentioned earlier, you can't start planning early enough. So it uh, looks like that's the end of the questions. Uh, I greatly appreciate the time that you've spent with us uh, today. Hopefully we have answered a few of those questions uh, concerning temporary kitchens. And of course there are uh, folks on board that can provide uh, additional information for you. Again, uh, feel free to visit our website at kitchens2go.com or to uh, contact Carrie or call us at the number that you see on your screen. Once again, I greatly appreciate your time and I look forward to working with you in the future. Have a great afternoon.